guys today I'm going to review a Christmas ghost story and this one's called a warning to the curious along the coast of Norfolk there persists an ancient legend a warning to the curious was broadcast in 1972 at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve and it's the second of the BBC's A Ghost Story for Christmas they used to make one every year it runs 50 minutes and was directed by Lawrence Gordon Clark who directed the first one and many others in the series it's based on the M.R. James story from 1925 that was published in A Warning to the Curious and other ghost stories However, the BBC's adaptation updated the story to the 1930s. Clive Swift returns as the character Dr. Black, who made a first appearance in the stalls of Barchester. This was the character's last appearance in the series. It was adapted into an audio drama in 2020. A Warning to the Curious is classed as one of the bleakest stories from M.R. James and the BBC version is classed as one of the best in the series and one of the more scariest. A Warning to the Curious stars Peter Vaughan, Clive Swift, Roger Milner, Gilly Fraser. So the plot of this one's about this guy who finds this crown buried in a wood. He digs it up and he gets haunted by this ghost that's protecting the crown. So it's a little bit similar to the story Whistle and I'll Come To You. In that one it's about the guy who finds this like whistle, blows it and the ghost comes after him. So MRGM seemed to have a, a thing about that, about objects. In this one it stars Peter Vaughan. Hey Phil, that's that bugger out of porridge. Yes he did Bones, he played the character of Harry Kraut. A couple of my lads could have a go at it. <laughs> Damage it beyond medical dispute. Oh, no, 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 I think There's I... an interesting prologue that starts 12 years before the actual main story. In that one, you see a character called William Eager, and he, his job is to pr protect this crown. So you see him kill this guy who discovers it, he kills him with his cleaver. You don't actually see any blood or gore, you just hear the noise of a uh, chopping. Chopping as he's chopping his head. And I thought that was a really effective start. <laughs> Don't dig in! Later you find out that the character died. That's why he keeps coughing. Because he had an illness. But his ghost is still protecting the crown from people that are discovering it. What I like about this story is like the location work. There's really scary panoramic views of the coastline and inside the wood. And as it's getting darker, Peter Vaughan's character's digging, searching for the crown. You can see it, the sky getting darker and darker. That's really chilling, that. It's also accompanied by some eerie music. It's very effective. So there's some really eerie scenes in this. And it emphasises how creepy woods are. That's why I've always felt a bit safer in the city. Because in the city there's loads of people. In villages and dark woods there's a chance of something happening. So when he discovers the crown he gets chased by the ghost of William Eager. And the ghost keeps haunting him. There's some eerie scenes in his room where he can hear a coffin. So the ghost... Because when he died he was coughing. So the ghost's still coughing. So he, he, he can hear that noise in his room at times. And there's one scene that's really scary. Where he actually sees the ghost in his room. It's done very quick though. You don't say much. But it's all the more effective for it. The hell of bloody shit blue lights when I saw that bloody ghost in that room. Another good thing about this story, it's got a bit of continuity with the first story, the, the Stalls of Barchester, because of the character of Dr. Black. He's in both, played by Clive Swift. So it was nice to see him. However, at the end, the spirit of William Eager follows him onto the train. So it's taken that he, he's going to get killed. And indeed, that's the last time you see him. So it's taken that the ghost killed him as well. And what I like most about MRGM's ghost stories is the ghosts are always evil. So you don't get any silly, friendly ghosts in these stories. 
They're all haunting someone in, in his stories. So this production hits the sweet spot that I love. It's made in the 70s. It's subtle horror, not over the top horror. And ghost stories are all the more effective for it. Like a film called The Haunting from 1963. That's a classic example of how to do a ghost story without having over the top effects. Hey Phil, this bugger's better than that OTT shite they make now. It's all bloody CGI rubbish. Looks like a fucking cartoon. And when you compare that film to its remake, that was over the top nonsense. So the remake wasn't scary at all, but the original, it's terrifying. So a modern audience might think, well, n nothing's happening, it's boring. These bloody modern films gone too bloody fast. I can't tell what's fucking happening at times. But if you stick with it, almost like an after effect afterwards, you, you think about it afterwards. For instance, if you watched it, and then afterwards went walking in a wood at night, you'd be bloody shitting yourself. Or if you're watching over the top film, bloody vampires or something, you know for a fact stuff like that won't, you won't say a vampire. Whereas ghosts and the supernatural, there's a possibility that it could happen. So overall I thought this was one of the best of the baby say ghost stories. It was well shot acted and it had a chilling atmosphere all the way through it. Like a sense of dread. A fear of being observed and watched. So out of 10 I'm going to give this top marks. 10. 10 out of 10. But to get it going to do like it. Excellent production Phil. This is what horror's all about. Okay everybody. Bye. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye.